people often ask me how we approach the writing process, and um, and it's just, I mean, it's different on each each song. Sometimes the song is laid out. Sometimes Riley dreams up a song. He comes to practice and and he says like, Benny, I need you to play this right here. Like, I need you to do this fill, you know. And he has a very specific plan for each moment of the song. But um, but a lot of times we have an idea that we throw out and then we all just start just creating and adding on and, and putting our two cents in. There's so many times that I'll bring an idea for a song, something that I've put my heart and soul into, to Mike, and I'll be like, dude, you gotta listen to this. Like, here's the whole story behind it. It's really meaningful to me. You gotta listen to this. And he'll listen to it and be like, it's all right. Like, <laughs> and I'll just be like so excited about showing him this song. And his response is, yeah, it's kind of boring. You know, like he's very direct, but I think because he's willing to be so direct, um, it's that's a big part of what makes our music interesting is when Mike forces the rest of us to think oh wait a second maybe he's right maybe what I'm doing here is kind of boring or maybe what I'm doing here needs to be spiced up a little bit and when he does that it forces our songs to, it forces us to take him to the next level yeah they lift their eyes Riley's focus as a singer and as a songwriter has gone a lot more in the direction of melody um, and so for me, it's like, it's a lot more poppy. Um, and I, I, some people use that in like a bad, in a bad connotation, but I, but I think that's like the greatest thing about pop music is, is that it's focused on the melody. But no one can heal me now. The other thing that's happened is as songwriters, we have learned how to preserve the groove more um, so it's still proggy and it still has some unique parts to it but it's but overall you can feel the flow of the song a lot better if music's really good you'll like it the first time you'll you'll have that gut feeling and I think like chasing that feeling like that that feel of the groove and and the kind of catchy melody and everything like that was a lot more of the focus but it was never like making pop for pop's sake you know it was just that's the music we came up with and that's the way we've grown as a band so with this album my goal was to create something that is still at its heart a prog rock album because i'll always be a prog or you know a prog musician at heart but something that has prog at its roots but is a little bit uh kind of wanders a little more towards the mainstream as far as uh, the initial listen you know so you have to listen a little bit deeper on this album to to hear its prog roots Track one through seven, we're all, those are the songs that we have written as a band uh, over the last two years, and some of them are ones that we've been playing for a while, some of them are newer songs, but they're songs that we just kind of wrote for the sake of writing more music, because we, you know, we had ideas in our heads and we wanted to get them out. Riley, like, is just such a musician, he's so focused on music every day that, that to him, he just writes songs, like, that's just... It's not like, it's not like his cat died and he's like, oh God, I gotta write a song about this. It, it's, it's just something he does every moment. Track eight through 11 is really eight through 10, but, tra but the final track on the album kind of goes along. Uh, we call the uh, the Stagehound and Serpentine Suite. Stagehound is a is a blues singer from the 1920s uh, who who gained a very big name for himself during the beginnings of the Great Depression, singing for the masses. He was not rich. He was not uh, from a privileged background. He was kind of known to be the uh, the unprivileged person singing for all of the other unprivileged people and that really spoke to people back then 
and it got to the point where he was getting massive crowds of people coming to see him and his music. He was getting very famous from it, and that's when when he started to build this name for himself was when he met Sally, who's the other character in our story. He sees her, and the minute he sees her, he falls in love with her, and they, and, and the feeling is mutual, she, she falls in love with him too. She is threatened one night, she's met at their house and she's threatened and saying, by, from Serpentine, who's the other character, saying, if you don't come with me, I will kill Stagehound. And so she, uh, she agrees and she goes with him reluctantly and they fake her death and she goes off with Serpentine to Chicago. For the last several years, we've um, one of the songs that we've had a lot of fun playing live is uh, "Red House," <laughs> and uh, and it's the one song that we all just decided this is not a song that Riley should be singing, just because I'm not gritty enough. You know, my voice, no matter how high I sing or how loud I sing or how much I push my voice, it doesn't really break up. I have this like weird, stupid, clean voice that can't get gritty. But Benny can, and so when we did the spoken word thing, we uh, we decided, you know, Benny's got that like that Jimi Hendrixy like gruff thing that he can do with his voice. That's what we want. When they asked me if I wanted to do like a spoken word part on the record, I I asked them if I could imitate my hero Tom Waits. A diamond in a pile of rocks can't know what it's to be. Sometimes when you're in a situation or you're facing something that's like a big part of your life, uh, something that's like life changing, you don't, you don't recognize the significance of it. You just are experiencing the emotion of it. And so sometimes it's hard to see outside of yourself and recognize like the significance of something that's like a challenge that's life changing, you know? And so, so to me, that's it. That's what it is. It's like the theme is just things that affect your life and change your life drastically. Um, and that seems to be the common theme to me holding, holding these songs together. The, in each one of the songs, there's like characters or events that take place that are somewhat like life changing in a way and, um, and kind of redefine who you are as a person. Why are you not getting this on camera? Why are you not filming? Oh wait, do I have to portray mental instability? There you go. There's your Dutch angle for you. <laughs> 